Mike on. Uh, one of those. Uh, Check the mic. Would, uh, read the revisions. Can you hear me now? Uh, Sarah Chandra, we're adding item four F resolution of notice of intent to amend the code of ordinances pertaining to garbage collection and disposal fees. And to the consent agenda, we're adding item five BB resolution authorizing agreement for property maintenance, maintenance with JLC Gardens. Chair, I entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Moved by Mr. Lawrence. Second by Mr. Gines. Any discussion, Mr. Lawrence? No discussion. Mr. Gines. None. Mr. Tisdale. Yes, I just want to explain my position again. These are items that are that are no. added the, the day of the council meeting, and uh, I would prefer that they be added prior so that they're published on the internet. These late items that are added, you will never see online. So, uh, and I'm particularly Concerned about the appearance, I don't think there's any evil intent, but one of the items that were added to the agenda deals with amending the garbage collection and disposal fees. So that concludes my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tisdale. Mr. Barrett? I have nothing. I have none either. Uh, all in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries 4 to 1. Uh, move on to mayor's report. Yeah, I have a brief report. Welcome everybody to this meeting. <laughs> Including my report. <laughs> okay. Move on to council reports. Well, once again, I'd like to welcome all the neighbors up and down from uh, White Avenue, basically to uh, Bill Mars and Rodenberg. Great job here again. Y'all support the property y'all live in. We want the council to do the right thing. So we're glad that you're here. Appreciate y'all coming. Thank you. Mr. Lawrence? No report. Mr. Newman? No Mr. Tisdale? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. There's a, a property owner between Keesler Credit Union and Edgewater Estates, and is, is uh, code enforcement actively engaged on that property? No, but I have been engaged in, in trying to get a correction. As, as when you and you know, I drove around, uh, I'm awaiting a response. Uh, but I think they have been as far as the, the, the the golf course, the old golf course property. Yeah, if we're, if we're moving forward on that, just because it's it's just unsightly if you're driving down Pass Road, and it's Hopefully. tough to explain to other constituents. Um, the repair of the sound system, you're still waiting a proposal, yes. right? From there. Okay. I know it's been horrible for the last couple of months. If you're watching this online. Public Works uh, crew that came out on a Saturday and <clears throat> literally drove the culvert there by uh, Pennzoil Park. It runs under Churchill Avenue. It drains Bay Vista subdivision. So I appreciate their time and effort on that. And I think uh, Ms. Bell and I are meeting with somebody who's looking to remove stumps, possibly, or at least give us a price on Pennzoil Park. And uh, I, I would also, for those interested, I have a World meeting scheduled for Wednesday, September 7th. That's at the Snyder Center at 6 o'clock. Again, that's a Ward 5, but it's open to the public for anybody who wants to. And, and hiss or pat me on the back looking for knife handles. <laughs> and, uh, that concludes my comments. Thank you. Mr. Barrett, I just have a couple of things. Um, the Eagle Point Park, the ditch is terrible. We need to get that mowed as soon as possible. I rode through there yesterday. The paving, they just paved the parking lot. Uh, looks great. Also, the paving on um, Shorecrest was done yesterday. That looks great as well. Much needed. Appreciate that. Um, but that ditch, and then throughout the ward, and, and this isn't anything on public works because I know that with all the weather and everything, but if there's any contractual services money left, if we could, we just have, and in Ward 7, there's so many big open ditches. And if we can just get some help on that, it's 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 really getting by. I'm getting a lot of complaints on that. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, I got a couple of things. Uh, just like uh, for the record, uh, thank Ms. Shelly Bell and uh, Parks and Rec for resolving the issue uh, with our concessions that they're able to sell some Pepsi products. 
because of that, uh, the promoter, Glenn Latina, is bringing some uh, late season baseball tournaments to AJ Holiday Sportsplex. Uh, they're, they're pretty big uh, tournaments. Uh, I've looked at the plans, and, and it's going to be uh, quite an amazing thing for the teams that are visiting and any, any local teams that are participating as well. So thank you for that. Um, I do have a request by a resident at 646 Wetzel Drive, and this just happened before I stepped in here. Uh, she's having, she's building a home, and the right of way, the city right of way, is where she's going to put her driveway. And uh, there's some drainage issues uh, that the water is diverting right where she wants to put her driveway. Uh, on the piece of property that uh, she owns, so we need somebody to take a look at that and make make some make some recommendations. Uh, she has been in the process of, of trying to get her plans together for a couple months now, and she's ready to move forward. Uh, this is on the peninsula, the new uh, section called the peninsula, and she's putting quite a quite an investment um, in her new home. Um, and then finally. Uh, this is another request uh, that came in recently. I think a work order has been put in, or a work request has been put in. Uh, it's a house in between 739 and 743 Champagne Drive. There was a lightning strike uh, on, and it uh, blew out some of the writing. Uh, not necessarily, you know, it's it's our uh, position to fix it, but if we have some kind of roller influence. Uh, Appreciate expediting that as quickly as we can. And that concludes my report. Uh, Mr. President. Yes, sir. One question. Uh, Papa, what is the latest on Mike Leonard? He's doing fine. I think he's recovering. He's, we've been in contact daily, and he's been emailing everybody uh, like he was in his office. But uh, so he will hopefully, you know, in the next number of days, he'll be back, you know, in the saddle. So he's doing well. I mean, he'll be. Yeah. He'll come back to work when? Yeah, he's been out and about eating. We had sightings of him at a few restaurants around. Well, don't put so much pressure on him this time. You know what I mean? Don't worry. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I have. I did. Uh, I have one more thing to add. I would like uh, to at least tell the mayor, uh, "Happy birthday to your wife, uh, First Lady of Biloxi." Today, I hope she. Uh, you reminded me. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> I thought I'd subtly throw that in there, but uh, <laughs> that's not on YouTube. We love our first lady, and y'all, after all this is over, y'all enjoy a, a great birthday with Serena. Thank you. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll move on. Uh, there being no department reports that I'm aware of, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the public agenda, citizens' comments. We have a total of 45 minutes allotted. Uh, each person, uh, when you raise your hand and recognize, you'll have three minutes to speak on any topic uh, that you would like to speak about. Come up to the front, speak clearly into the microphones, and state your name and your address. And there's also a document on the table if you would go ahead and sign in legibly so we can get that duly recorded. So I'll start on my left, your right. Yes, sir. Time we should have a little. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Gilbert Ramsey, military veterans outreach specialist. I've been a resident in the community since sixty seven on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I'm here to introduce an opportunity for enhancement recreation for mobility impaired citizens, senior citizens. What happened before the pandemic, or excuse me, before the, um, after the oil spill, I went to a seminar at Gulf Coast Research Laboratory. At this seminar, I learned this to Gulf Coast High School students, robotic students. And robotic students came to inquire how they could help me. And so what I introduced was robotic lifting system the disabled community to accommodate disabled people from the pier onto the boat, back onto the pier. So they went out, went out and built it with MIT grant. So I've been recognizing this opportunity. So I came to the city of Biloxi to introduce the, the, con, the new pier. What's it called? Cons Pier. And also the Hill Park Pier. 
I see all this development coming in. I want to talk with one minister in Houston this morning for an outreach at Deer Island and included Ship Island. So what I'm doing in Houston is an opportunity because I've seen the hunters using track wheelchairs in the woods. So here is Colorado Park and using it at the parks. So what I'm doing is going across the whole state with track wheelchairs included the islands with my BP contract, Enhancement Recreation, my building impaired citizens, international recognition for hospitality state. I have a bed and bottle water company too I'm launching. Donating houses, cows, and dormitories to the proceeds. I'm coming out of the woods. I've been working on since 2013. Everybody knows me. I'm making sure it's implemented appropriately with Lost Cape Bridge Lost Outreach. We will maintain it and provide it to remove it during storms. Because how this can be because blue economy, quality, life, and nation of innovative ideas with the University of Southern Mississippi and Mississippi State Research Capabilities. But I wait on me. My name is Gilbert Ramsey. I have a um, sponsorship with various casinos. Sponsor me to, for marketing agents for adaptive tourism, assistive tourism. I looked at this for Tourism Commission. I want to be, be a guest speaker at Tourism Commission board meeting, do any of this appropriately. Oh, let's keep building the community. So Charles, discuss what you do. I know what I'm doing. I'm stepping on the plate and hitting home run for everybody. Y'all are blessed and be safe. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. Anyone else on my left? You're right. Yes, ma'am. My name is Beverly Hammond, and I live at 148 Acacia in what the neighbors call a historic neighborhood. I am here to ask the council to deny short-term rental status at 115 St. John Street. We are by no means the only city burdened with this issue of short-term rentals along the coast. Upon doing some investigating, <clears throat> I found these remarks from people dealing with short-term rentals in our neighborhoods in Alabama. One lady said, I moved from Chicago in 2014 for the simple pleasure of sun and surf, <clears throat> but now my home is sandwiched between two short-term rental units, and the simple life that I had hoped for has become very complicated. One renter used my outdoor shower without even asking. Another borrowed my garden hose to wash his vehicle when I was not even there. As a full-time resident, I'm frustrated and on the fence about whether or not she should even stay. Other people in her area complained about short-term rentals being used as party houses, which invite guests to the area where residents expect peace and quiet. A lot of the renters are respectable people, but there are a group of people who could care less and are very dis disruptive. Parking is always an issue. In neighborhoods such as ours, there are only uh, driveways that support one, at the most, two vehicles. Consequently, when short-term renters come, they invite other guests, and we see parking on the street and sometimes blocking our driveways or parking right on the lawn. My husband and I are asking you, the council, to take action to protect our neighborhood from the impacts of short-term rentals and to keep our area from being bought out by people who want to commercialize single family zoned neighborhoods and to stand up for the rights of the local Biloxians by denying 115 St. George to be uh, St. John to be allowed short-term rental. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Anyone else on my left? Yes, ma'am. My name 
name is Linda Giardelli, and I live at 169 Miramar Avenue for over 25 years. And I'm here today to oppose short-term rentals in our Biloxi neighborhoods. I'm speaking on behalf of Martha Tripp and many, many residents that could not be here today. At this time, I would like to ask all residents who oppose short-term rentals in their neighborhoods to please stand. The council members who are familiar with our neighborhoods know there is very little space between our homes. Noise, loud music, and extra cars are all part of STR's downside, not to mention a revolving door of strangers and the unknown. We have the right to live in our single-family residential neighborhoods. We elect our ward representatives to ensure our rights in our neighborhood are being met. It is not our responsibility or desire to support a money-making enterprise in our neighborhoods. I would like to know, as a taxpaying resident, how much money does the City of Biloxi earn from an STR? It seems economic development should include job creation and something that would benefit Biloxi and not destroy a neighborhood. There are eight Biloxi casinos. I've counted 24 hotels, motels in Biloxi, all taking the risk, paying taxes, employing people, having a business in the city of Biloxi, and not in a residential area. All that is accomplished with STRs is the destruction of our unique charm and history of old Biloxi homes and neighborhoods. If you vote yes to this initiative, all you are doing is denying a future homeowner the opportunity to join in the revitalization of our neighborhoods and our history. And I have a book, by the way, that is a history of our homes in Old Biloxi that I brought with me today. We depend on our city council to represent the rights of residents and support the large number of people who oppose STRs in their neighborhood. There is no reason to change the integrity of our neighborhoods. We made our homes in Biloxi based on the city of Biloxi zoning maps and laws to protect its residents from commercial development. Please vote against any zoning change on 115 St. John in all neighborhoods and allow us to live in our homes with a feeling of safety, security, and peace. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on my left would like to speak? Anyone else on my left? Is there anyone on the right side of the room? Come on up. Uh, James Pennington, Back Bay Mission Executive Director. Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, we'll be sharing a little bit more later, but I'm here with Sean Sullivan, our Chief Financial Officer, um, and we're looking to have our funding um, renewed back to $50,000 for the rehab work that we do. Some of what you're talking about here, actually, I concur. I moved into Biloxi now. I'm on Travia Avenue, kind of in that neighborhood. Um, and so we would like our funding restored, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Okay? Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else on my right? <clears throat> Come on up. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Freddie Frick, F-R-I-C-K. I live at 369 Rainer Street. Um, first of all, Mr. Lawrence and Mayor, Father John Kelly, retired priest down here. If I don't tell you guys both hi from him, He's excommunicating me from the church. So hello from he Father John Kelly. He said that before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so anyways, I live on Rainer Street. And um, my problem or my question or my concern is the uh, north end of Rainer Street is not finished. And I realize that's probably the IP's parking lot. And I've got pictures. Uh, the, the, the curbing was put in up until probably about, I'd say, 50 to 70 yards uh, 
to, the, to Back Bay. Then the curbing stopped. Now I looked on Calvet and I looked on, I think it's called Croesus, and that curbing went all the way up to Back Bay, and that's just on the other side of their parking lot. Uh, and I just, it, I have pictures of holes. I take my car up there, and uh, the dirt just runs in. There's a huge puddle up there now that is a, is a probably a hazard. And I just uh, was wondering, are you going to make them do something? That's my question. Hopefully you will. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else on my right? Uh, President, President. Yeah, I'll just tell them to see you after, afterwards. I, I'll have a little update on it for you. So I'll let you know. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Ryan Sinks. I reside at 1538 Collins Street. Maybe I'd like to start by naming a few people who can't be here. Charles Hollis, Eugene Eidlitz, Stephen Zigai, Marin Forsberg, Richard Pack, Nick Goyette, Ann Hewlett, Darlene Roberts, Randall Bussard, Deborah Gable, Joshua Saunders, Sid Tr and Trilby Trahan. Some of these people are here as well. Teresa Thompson, Beverly Hammond, Patty Mosley, Kay Moss, Susie Hathaway, Martha Tripp, Linda Giardelli, Vicki Ward. There are many more attached to this petition that was included along with the map that I had actually emailed all of you and dropped off a hard copy for everybody to review. And I hope that you at least spent a couple minutes reviewing it. As it takes a different approach when it comes to short-term rentals in communities and something that I have been working on for quite a long time as a 20-year veteran as a, on the Atlanta Police Department, which has actually influenced legislation on these in Atlanta. Um, some of the things that we've noticed uh, and that are in the packet is that uh, when people ask about crime, it's very hard to delineate between short-term rentals and actual crime numbers. And why is that? Is because be if a cr crime occurs on the street or down the road and people are staying in the short-term rental, that is nothing that even uh, any police department will tell you that UCR guidelines that are put out by the FBI, they do not account for that. There is no checkbox to ask somebody if they're staying in a short-term rental, long-term rental, or if they own a house if a crime is being committed. Um, one of the things I noticed when going over the notes, which I couldn't be at the Planning Commission meeting, was that this had to have a public interest and have uh, promote public, public interest. Clearly, it does not. With the amount of people here today, the amount of people that have signed these petitions, and if you look very well, being 115 St. John here, which is the only one up currently, all these green flags denote everybody that lives on the entire block, myself included, that are not for it. Introducing transient tourist base to family-oriented neighborhoods is not only unfair and unethical, it's, just, it's not conducive to the lifestyle that people have of walking their dogs, raising their families. I know I'm trying to squeeze a lot in here, and it's because I have three minutes. I wish I had more, which is why I provided you all with those packets to peruse at your leisure. I just happened to notice a lot of these things reading it. Um, some of the issues that I did notice, like I said, living on the street, I see it all the time. Um, I'm not at home as, as much as my wife still being actively working where she is retired. Um, there, the parking issues, which is under Section D, uh, the ingress, egress, ingress, egress on St. John, um, if it's going to be six to eight people and there's only two parking spaces, I see that being a major issue. So one of the other things that it, that it, it does not account for is it needs to be taken into consideration. Hotels have managers, staff, security, and all these other things. I see I'm out of time. I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else on my right? Hello, my name is Debbie Collins. 